In Marlene at Home neemt Marlene de Wouters ons mee naar mensen met een bijzonder levensverhaal, persoonlijkheden met een uniek talent of uitgesproken visie. In de pers werd hij omschreven als de man die ons opnieuw van Amerika deed houden. Hij had geen diplomatiek verleden toen president Obama hem in 2009 vroeg om Amerika te vertegenwoordigen in België. Toch zei hij ja. Vandaag ontvangt Howard Gutman me bij hem thuis op de ambassade in Brussel. This is uh, the atrium. I take my language lesson every morning here, right here from every nine, morning. Every morning. Uh, and how's it going? Because I understand you really want to be able to speak both languages. Right. And I must say, I heard you uh, speak one time, I think it was a year ago, and you started in Flemish and it was not bad at all. Okay, so here's where the progress I'm making. F French, I've gotten to the point where I'm willing to do it and destroy the language. So the poor fans of Standard de Liège heard me give a speech in French. By the end, they were holding their ears and just reading it. It sounded Ukrainian by the end. Flemish, I understand more and more. My pronunciation is not so bad, no. but Nederlands is niet gemakkelijk. Your word order is crazy, and you have to be an expert. So you have to know when to put the verb. My zone gaat naar de kerk, but ik denk dat my zone naar de kerk gaat. Gaat, yeah. So why? It, just because I said ik denk, it went to the end. But you also don't have to be just a linguist. You have to be a physicist. So you have to know if something stat or leaked or stat or hung. And I can't, I look at a coffee cup. Is a coffee cup leaked or stat? I don't know, so I don't know the verbs. I don't know, I would use on. It's yeah. on the table. Yeah. I would use, I put, op you don't put, it's op the tafel, it's fine. Op the tafel. Op the tafel, yeah. but it has to stat or leak or yeah. hung, yeah. or you have to know the physics. Yeah. So it's a hard language. Plus, people pronounce, you know, ik weet ik niet becomes kwedik. Yeah, kwedik you know, niet. What happened to ik weet ik niet? You know, it's gone. It's kwedik niet. What was that? Kwedik niet. I have no idea what kwedik, you know. Howard Gutman en zijn vrouw wonen in Hartje, Brussel, op de Amerikaanse ambassade. Op een deel van het gelijkvloers vinden de officiële ontvangsten plaats. Het eerste wat me opvalt naast de Amerikaanse vlag zijn de talrijke foto's. Well, I think most people are, are curious if you have pictures that people could recognize. So it's harder uh, for an American to recognize Chassel de France as a movie star, but George Clooney or Ben Affleck is a little easier, so if you ha happen to know them, it's good to have the pictures. I'm probably harder for an American to recognize Ilio de Rupo, but if you have Barack Obama pictures, okay. Um, You're so that's good. again. <laughs> and it's, it's fun to see and to sh for yeah. people to see. And then there's art. Mm -hmm. There's the art and embassy program. We borrow between 15 and 20 pieces of art from American museums and um, galleries. And it's to show American art, except one piece of Belgian art. Yeah, Isabelle, Isabel. de Borgraaf. Isabelle de Borgraaf. Yeah, so when we had Isabelle, we thought it was a perfect addition. De ambassadeur is enthousiast en gastvrij. Hij neemt me mee en vertelt honderd uit. Um, this is the ballroom. Mm -hmm. It is a chameleon. It can change to fit what is needed. Um, we have dinners here that are too big for the dining room. We've had ballets here. Joe Biden made that look like the White House by putting a backdrop there to do a press conference. This room can do anything and everything. I think it's one of the nicest rooms in uh, in Belgium to host the reception. When the movie Fame came out, oh, yes. we had the reception here. It must have been great uh, for all these people and also for you because you, you had a, a part hey, in, that, uh, in that movie. Yes, so normally the State Department does not want ambassadors in movies. No. But I had filmed this before Barack Obama called to ask me to come to Belgium. I had filmed it in January of 2009. He called me in February of 2009, so it was already filmed. Came out in October of 2009 and we could use it for great public diplomacy. It got my first introduction to lots of people. I later pitched the State Department because I was supposed, I was asked to play the judge in the Lincoln Lawyer and another role and I said, look, we'll use this for diplomacy. Uh, I don't take any proceeds. I'll give it to a Belgian American charity, but the State Department does not want ambassadors acting in movies. What I really wanted here now is after I saw what we did with fame, I knew we could reach audiences that are hard for ambassadors to reach. Mm -hmm. What I learned is I'm not a career diplomat, so I don't know traditional diplomacy, 
And by not being limited to traditional diplomacy, you could reach much further. So if you're going to build the bridge, you've got to build the bridge with everybody. So this brought together everyone from Princess Astrid's daughters and minister's sons to kids from Molenbeek with headscarves. And we began to do the outreach to everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what they said about you, huh? If you read the papers every morning, you, I'm sure you know, they said, he's the man who made us love America again. That means a great deal to me. Um, uh, I used to come every summer as a tourist to Europe. And over the last few years before the recent election, before President Obama, it was not that comfortable to be an American. I mm -hmm. did not wear my Boston Red Sox t-shirt because we were in parts in Europe and people would be angry. This year, in 2011, a poll came out two weeks ago from the Gallup poll. They surveyed all the countries in the world. Uh, and for 2011, Belgium finished first in the world with the highest increase in its favorable view of U.S. leadership. Did you decorate this or your wife? Which yeah. is on the first floor, you can add pictures mm -hmm. um, and the art and embassy, but this is America's home. Okay. So this floor would be picked by the State Department. If you want to do a major change, you have to get Washington approval. Okay. To me, I came here and thought it was glorious. When you get to the second floor, you can put some of your things on the mm -hmm. second floor. That's where the guest bedroom stays. Can um, we go there? Or? Uh, we can go to the second floor. Oh, sure. great. Yeah. Shall we quickly have a look at the pictures first? Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, and so this is Steven Spielberg Hi, yeah. uh, for Ten Ten, and Didier Rangers, who's now the foreign minister. Mm -hmm. and. We were introducing Spielberg to the Belgians with the opening of the Tan Tan movie, um, which did fabulously. This is a young me with my pre-ambassador haircut. Oh, this is a great picture. A Belgian recently asked me if that's my son. I was so insulted, I can tell you. Here we've got uh, my yes. sons mm -hmm. with Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. This was before the election. This son spent three years here, went to the international school right here, is just graduating. Okay. He leaves next week, mm -hmm. and he'll attend Columbia University. Mm -hmm. um, and my oldest son is back home, uh, a businessman in Washington. Um, this is George Clooney. Filming oh, he looks a bit different Well, there. he was filming Syriana. Yes. Um, but and with a beard also very beard. nice. This huh? is in my home in Washington, and there's a great story about this picture. Your wife. So, yeah, it's my wife. Very so you'll lucky. See, right, right. So you'll see my wife being very lucky, and me looking like I'm upset. But this picture is really about how much sense of humor George Clooney has, and let me tell you why. He was in our home, and he saw this picture. This is a picture of Al Gore mm -hmm. saying hello to my wife, and for some reason my expression was less than happy. George Clooney saw that and said, let's recreate the picture. But a bit more, let's more intense. Let's, let's do it. So, so I'll hug your wife and you look upset. And so he staged this to copy that. And there's Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner from my hobby beforehand. I used to, I was a very serious lawyer for 27 years, but as a hobby, I did things in Hollywood. So I knew them a little bit. And I did a lot of politics, so I knew a lot of the politicians. You've had a very full life, huh? Well, I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. No, no, that is well duidelijk. This is a man who van het leven houdt and die graag voluit gaat in alles wat he doet. Maar stel dat president Obama niet herverkozen wordt, wat dan? Uh, we'll see. Um, what and when, I have no idea, because we have an election. Um, if um, President Obama were not to win, uh, I need to be gone by January 20th of next year. I'd leave around Christmas. So in this country, um, uh, I have been vocal in supporting closing Guantanamo, in supporting our climate talks. Mm -hmm. And those are consistent with the president's positions. That's mm -hmm. why he sent me here. If the, gov the country went in a different direction and elected someone who was against those positions, I wouldn't be the right spokesman. Mm -hmm. Will you be set? Oh, we will be. I will be holding on to the, the legs the of the tafel. furniture, <laughs> under the, uh, not up the top. But they'll, they'll have to drag me out and put me on the plane. But I won't leave my friends. No. We'll leave the country. It's important to give new space for the new ambassador, but we had fabulous ambassadors before, Sam Fox and Alan Blinken come back all the time. I would hope to be um, certainly visiting our friends in Belgium, um, coming back maybe for boards or coming back for consulting or something, so I would keep connected to Belgium. Mm -hmm. You cannot leave and just say no, goodbye. No, no. Op het gelijkvloers zijn er nog tal van andere vertrekken. 
Maar je kunt zien dat er hier toch echt gewoond wordt. Hier is our dining room. Oh, this is for dinners up till 22. Oh, that's If we go larger than 22, we go into the ballroom. And um, if you're just the two of you? So the two of us, what we love if we can, but usually only on weekends. My favorite thing if I can is like go to Kinopolis uh, and, and sit quietly in a movie where it's dark and no one sees me, except my security's in the row behind me, and maybe grab a pizza on the way back. Mm -hmm. Is that a big difference for you to, to have to, um, you know, think about, you know, to have security, to not be able to do everything you really want anymore? It, it totally really does, yeah. it, it is a change. I love the Belgians. Mm. I'd be delighted to take as many pictures and shake hands and all the time and I love that. Mm -hmm. Having to have security if I go out the door really gets you a bit. You go out for your anniversary, mm. you know, you go to a beautiful restaurant anniversary, you're here. The security, who does a fabulous job. They're wonderful people, mm -hmm. they do yeah. their best to be, but they're here. You take your wife and your kid to see the Avengers yeah. Yeah. in the movies yeah. and two rows behind you yeah. is your security which yeah. is yeah. needed. Well, if Belgium decides I need it's not American, it's Belgian security. If Belgium decides I need it, I thank them. Yeah. Um, we want to be safe, but I'm not used to it. Yeah. Um, when I get home, I get off the plane and I'm... You're free. I'm a free man. I'm free on the one hand. On the other hand, I have to take out the garbage at the house. So it's okay. It's both. Yeah, you can't have it all. You huh? can't have it all. No, no, no. no. But I, I can imagine that, you know, not being able to just open the door and go for a run and that's... You hit the main one. That park is, is the glorious. I got to Belgium and realized I was living on a park and I could just run in the morning on the park. And so the security, I didn't know, it, said, what time will you need us tomorrow? And I said, oh, I don't have my first appointment until nine. So I'll see you at nine. I'll just take a run in the morning. As I said, this is amazing. I live on a glorious park. It's beautiful. I put my running shorts and the t-shirt, get ready to run. I open the door. There were three 26-year-old Belgians in their running shorts with their walkie-talkies in there. I went around the park a couple of times. I'm an old man, huffing and puffing. They were like, do you want to go around anymore? Last time I ever ran. 55-year-old men don't run with 26-year-old security no, guys. It will destroy your ego. Okay, but there is one a terrace, I think, where There's you can go terrace. without security. That's the only place in, in all of Belgium I can be outside without security is upstairs on the terrace. Shall we go there? I sure will indeed. Okay. I'll just show you briefly here. We've yes. got Michelle Obama, so yeah. as close as we have to royalty in yes. both countries, yes. and Barack Obama. <laughs> and my poor wife, my wife is a perfect height for me, but Michelle <laughs> Obama and Matilda are both very tall Very women. tall, yes. So she can buy a break no matter what. She says, I always look like their younger sister or their young or their daughter. But you know, Barack is tall too, and so uh, I tell her, don't worry about it. It's funny because you have, uh, with President Obama, you have a lot of similarities, right? Your wives, Michelle, Michelle, and then your, your university you went to? It's more than that. Um, I told him this, and so let me tell you, there are only two people in the world, I believe, who graduated from Columbia University, then went to Harvard Law School, and then one year after graduating Harvard Law School, on October 3rd, married their wives, Michelle. No. Now, when people hear that, they say, you must be stalking Barack Obama. <laughs> and then I point out that I did each of those things before he did. Okay. He's been following my path. I don't want to take credit for the marriage of Barack and Michelle Obama <laughs> on October 3rd, because I happened to marry Michelle on October 3rd, but he followed me. Okay, that's There good. Go. Good, so you have to, to, to you know, straighten that out. Straighten that out. Op de bovenverdieping mogen ambassadeurs tal van persoonlijke voorwerpen plaatsen. Ook hier weer heel veel foto's, waar Howard Gutman de nodige anekdotes bij vertelt. This is a terrible quality picture, but a wonderful picture. Um, it's totally spontaneous. Mm -hmm. And I was walking in the U.S. Senate with a law partner of mine, Greg Craig, John Kerry, who was the Democratic nominee before Barack Obama, and Barack was coming out. Mm -hmm. Greg Craig is a very well-known Democrat as well. So he saw Kerry and I saw Barack, and now Democrats do this sort of hug. Oh, yes. And so it looks like two presidential candidates and two of the lawyers hugging away. We lopen verder naar de gastenkamer. Hier hebben beroemdheden gelogeerd. Van voormalige presidenten Nixon en Bush tot John Malkovich en Jesse Jackson. What do you miss most about America? Hmm. Um, it's not really a problem because of technology. Mm -hmm. So in the morning I hear what's in the Morgan and the Standard, I hear what's in Le Soir and, and Walid Belgique, but I also read the Washington Post. 
I would miss my Washington Redskins, American football, dearly, but I watch every game. Okay. You can get it. So that's, that's all terrific. In January and February, I miss the light. But in May, June, and July, I love the light. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, as long as I can get through February where it's dark, I'm home free and all is well. What can Belgians learn from Americans? I think we learn from each other. Um, Not the diplomatic answer. No, but I'll <laughs> tell you what I mean. I think we learn from each other. Um, it is both a strength and a weakness. Mm -hmm. A strength and a weakness. That Belgium's first line is, well, we're only Belgium. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, because we could learn to be more modest, mm -hmm. we could learn to be, have more humility, and Belgium could learn to say, you know, we're Belgium and it counts. Mm -hmm. Belgium did a fabulous job in Libya, fabulous job in Libya. They are a strong partner of ours now in Afghanistan. Um, to the end, they're doing the right thing. They now will support the reconstruction efforts. So, you know, at a time when the rest of Europe is having problems, I tell the others, ambassadors to tell them to follow the Belgian example. Mm -hmm. The only people who don't say follow the Belgian example would be Belgians who say, oh, well, we're just Belgium and there's bigger mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. There may be bigger countries, but there's no more credible countries. Mm -hmm. I'm an outsider, I'm an American. So I see um, the, the supposed conflicts in the country. And then when I give a speech, I say what's remarkable for me, Belgium is one of the most united, politically united countries in the world. And then they give me that strange look, and then I explain, it only takes a minute. I come from a country which is a fabulous democracy, where 30% of our country can oppose climate, can oppose the science of climate. 30% of our country can support climate change and think it's critical to our future, and 40% can be in the middle. 30% don't think the transatlantic relation is that important. 30% think it's vital, 40% in the middle. That's real political division, and that's a sign of a strong democracy. In Belgium, there are not two Belgians who disagree on any of those fundamental issues. So when you agree on that much, you can have the same democracy and the same amount of tension over the difference between a bridge and a tunnel. And I have seen it now in Antwerp, the difference between a bridge and a tunnel can create the same kind of democratic tensions as these fundamental issues. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a luxury of democracy. That means the countries are working well. Um, but also for Belgium, I look and say um, on the political issues, the key issues of the time, on climate, on the transatlantic relationship, on fundamental rights for health care or the like, Belgians are all united. President Obama asked you to be the ambassador here in our mm -hmm. country. What do you remember of that phone call or that moment that he asked you? I remember it very well. I was sitting at my desk at my law firm. The phone rings. I pick up, hello, Howard Gutman. A woman's voice says, please hold for the President of the United States. Barack comes on, says, Howard, how are you doing? And I said, pretty well, since the woman just said, please hold for the President of the United States. And he, get, he laughed a little, and I said, are you getting used to that, that title? And he said, yeah, it's coming along. Um, and then he said, you've been a, uh, a good advisor, a good colleague, a good supporter, and I'd love for you to represent us in Belgium. And I said, I'd be delighted to. But Immediately? I said, you'd be I'd be delighted to. When the President of the United States calls and asks you to do something. You say yes. You don't say, I'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a number, I'll call you back. Um, um, so when we looked at where it would work as a family, there were five or six places. So I said, look, if I get any of these five or six, I'd be happy to serve abroad. De Amerikaanse ambassadeur en zijn vrouw hebben het erg naar hun zin in ons land. Ze willen de bevolking echt leren kennen en zich zoveel mogelijk integreren. Maar met security om je heen is dat niet zo makkelijk. De enige plaats waar ze rustig zonder hen kunnen zitten is het terras. Hier haalt Howard Gutman herinneringen op aan zijn ouders. My father was a Holocaust survivor from Poland who came to America illegally. Um, so I, I celebrate my Judaism. Um, I do outreach to Muslim communities. Um, Did your father I, tell you a lot about what he, uh, never, what he went? Never a word, including my own last name. So the people who survived would never talk about it. Um, he died when I was 16. I thought his last name had always been Gutman. I was Howard Gutman since I was born. His real name was Gutman Mogulnitsky. 
Polish name. He came into our country illegally um, using a passport from Danzig. Poland had quotas after the war. We had quotas on Poles leaving. He couldn't get to America. So he took his name, Gutman Mogonitsky, and made it Moshe Max Gutman. If he was going to invent a name, why invent Gutman? I could have been a Cooney, or I could have been, <laughs> could have been a great name. You know, Howard Cooney would have been fine, but he, um, I, he didn't even tell me that. I learned it after he died when we had to have a, really? a headstone. My mother put Max Gutman and Gitman Mogonitsky on the headstone. Since I've been ambassador, certain people have found me. There are 35 Americans who are descendants of the seven or so people who survived from his town, and we're all going to Poland in October. My father spoke a very broken English. He didn't understand American football, American baseball, so he mainly wanted to know, um, was I studying, and would I st am I still gonna be the governor of New York? Um, that's about that it. That was your And he worked, when, what he did is he worked six days a week in the garment center to put food on the table. A lot of hours. So I was sort of like, well, my dad's a little different. You know, he wore black shoes and white socks. No American dad would do that. <laughs> and my mother would say, well, he comes from Poland. I don't know what Poland meant. And he had a little tough time in the war. Did I know he survived in a forest for four years uh, during the war? No, not till after he died. So I just thought, boy, I wish my dad knew when you wear white socks, you don't wear black shoes. So it wasn't the closest, but when I was older, and unfortunately, most of it after he died, I then had greater perspective, mm -hmm. knew what he was and, and what Did, we owed him. He would have been very proud of you. You know, coming back to Europe um, as a U.S. ambassador would have just blown his mind. He just could not imagine that you could sneak on boats and get phony passports and have your son come back to represent the, what he regarded as the greatest country in the world. Could not have imagined it. And your mom? My mom, I talk to her you know, three times a week on her Vonage phone. She is my biggest follower on our website that shows all the pictures. She knows when I've been in all. She'll ask about floats. She watches the YouTubes. Um, she great. follows it all. She's, and then of course she starts every conversation and ends every conversation with, your father would be so proud of you. Oh. <laughs> Um, now, you, one of your goals is to visit uh, the 589 cities and villages. How far are you now in I'm, your, in, in your I'm, goal? Uh, over 440. Um, we made that pledge after we came uh, as part of rebuilding the partnership. It was clear to me I could talk to uh, then Prime Minister Van Rompuy or subsequently Prime Minister Waterm or now Prime Minister Drupo about the partnership, but you had to rebuild the confidence, the mutual respect, uh, you had to listen uh, with all the people. Mm -hmm. And so I said, look, if we're gonna do it with all the people, we'll literally see all the people. And so we'll visit every city, village, and commune. We've tracked it. Um, many of them are formal visits with the mayor and the governor and the leading businesses and seeing the sites, the museums, um, for carnivals or the Dudumons or whatever it might be. Um, so I've met, you know, I've met all the governors, I meet most of the leading mayors, but for some in Belgium, there's a lot of official cities that have a strip with some houses or farms. Some have nothing but a house. For us to count it as a, a visit, I have to be there and someone has to know I was there. Mm -hmm. And almost all the time, occasionally the camera hasn't worked, but almost all the time I have to take a picture that shows I was there. So I've had some days in cities of 4,000 people it's beginning to get dark, it's windy and cold. We're there, it's only f houses. There is no pub, there is no, and there's no one on the street. So I've had to knock on the door to say, hi, you know, hi, this way in Basque American, and, and you know, and, or in Fleming. I visit all the cities, and to have an official visit, I must see someone. You are my visit. And so far, my security is like <laughs> thinking it's nuts, but I got to see someone. It's, so we've done some of those, too, a lot of those too. What is the most uh, memorable visit you've had? I had this took a little getting used to. Yes. And I'll, at the carnival. Yes. So there's more humor in Belgium than in America. This is a carnival. I'm dressed in a suit. I meet the mayor. About a, a minute and a half later, the first float comes. It's this mayor in a tiny bikini with everything showing and I'm sitting next to her and I'm sitting there like this. She was naked in front of me in the float. 
and I didn't know what to do. The next one was Peter de Creme in a pink ballerina dress of tutu. Or this is Fonska and... Ah, uh, Fonska and Löwe. You know, now, and they tried to tell me this is pouring knowledge into his head. Yes, exactly. That is beer. There's no... <laughs> I looked at that, I started laughing, because I'm like, that's not knowledge. This is not Löwe. There's InBev is right there. Belgians also <laughs> throw, throw more food than anyone I've ever seen. So um, I throw... Um, Walnuts in Bastogne. I threw crackling. Here's crackling in Herodsbergen. In Banch, there's oranges. You think I have security? I'm getting pelted by oranges. I'm picking them up and throwing them back at the kids. We're gonna. We're having an orange fight. They, here they're drinking gold. They're drinking fish and throwing stale bagels, and that's fine. Well, two weeks ago, as an Eper, they're throwing cats. Did you uh, tell President Obama this? I don't say, well, if <laughs> like, one thing I would tell the Belgians, if he comes, we'll throw no food at him. <laughs> no crackling, no, no oranges. No throwing. No throwing at the president. No drink any fish. <laughs> we wanted to think, if you're going to eat anything, chocolate, frites maybe, but mussels, but <laughs> no, you know, no, fi no live fish. Het lag niet in de lijn der verwachtingen dat hij ambassadeur zou worden. Maar Howard Gutman werd op vraag van president Obama naar ons land gestuurd. Af en toe moet hij in Washington verslag gaan uitbrengen. I've seen him six since this picture, um, uh, but this picture was uh, the most important meeting. Um, this was he was due to come in that 2010, and when he couldn't, the White House asked me to come back in February of 2011 um, to brief the president on Belgium. Um, it was supposed to be 15 minutes. You cannot explain Belgium in 15 minutes. We went a half hour. <laughs> so Belgium had a half hour of one-on-one. -on -one. That's the two hands. You, you can see how passionate I am, and you can see his smiling, relaxed, uh, taking it all in with a chuckle. So um, He but, thought it was funny. <laughs> well, he wasn't laughing at Belgium. He's laughing with Belgium. Yes, yes. Um, but I am, in his presence, I'm my usual serious self now. I had brought him when I got there. I had brought our embassy baseball cap and I had bought, brought a box of Belgian chocolates. Mm -hmm. And this was the Monday and I saw him on Monday. I was for my one-on-one -on -one visit. On the Friday of that week, all the US ambassadors, the 185, were going by the White House for a handshake and a picture. We get to Belgium and they announce me and all of a sudden he gets a real angry look on his face. And I've never seen Barack Obama with an angry look. And I'm thinking, what, what the I... heck did I do? <laughs> As I go up there, I go, Howard, I'll have you know, the chief of staff ate all my chocolates. <laughs> 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 and then he burst into a huge smile and a huge laugh. But sure enough, I had the Belgian chocolates there. And Chief of Staff Daly had eaten all the chocolates before he had, he had one with me. And then that was it. And so I've sent him another box. You have a, a great sense of humor. Does he have that too, the president? He, he has a great sense of humor. He can laugh at himself. Yeah. Now he's brilliant and he's serious, mm -hmm. but he has no blood pressure and he can laugh at himself. And that's the most important thing, whether you're an ambassador or the president, to be able to laugh at yourself. Besides that, how would you describe him? He is the most amazing person I've ever met. He has an inner calm that I've never seen anywhere, almost a Zen. So he's the only person, I, I say it all the time, the only person I've ever met with no blood pressure. If I saw two real nasty countries leaving a conference room carrying a nuclear bomb, I would want to I'd go running, running. I'd want to go tell Barack Obama. He'll handle it. Barack, Barack, he just carried a nuclear bomb. He'd be like, okay, we'll take care of it. We have to first analyze why, to what intent, and what's the most effective remedy. Yeah. So he's always like this. And it's the most amazing temperament I've ever met. Howard Gutman heeft de smaak te pakken. Als het aan hem ligt, blijft hij bruggen bouwen. I didn't know it beforehand, but going out, meeting and talking and building bridges, I would love to remain a bridge builder. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks so much, I really appreciate it.